And then the French licensed Lara, the Seat Cars. <laughs> Cordo Bavario. J'ai peur toute seule. C'est hâte, vous êtes loin d'avoir tout vu. go unnoticed by Hollywood. Hollywood has traditionally taken their own characters or licensed from books or comics and now they're looking at uh, IP created by video games companies. And um, when we're negotiating with uh, Larry Gordon Associates uh, who are acting on behalf of Paramount, we wanted to make sure that Hollywood didn't take Laura in a place where we didn't want her to go. So we managed to get a, a, a veto over the script and over the cast. And when they came and said to me, um, we'd like Angelina Jolie to play the role of Lara Croft, I said, that's absolutely fine with me, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> you go ahead, you enjoy yourselves. And I, I did meet her a couple of times on the set at Pinewood and I'm still recovering from that. So, uh, sorry if I make a few dribbling now and then, so uh, anyway. I won't show you the movie now, just to say that it's uh, generated over $450 million at box office, another $100 million in DVD and video sales, and there's been theme park rides uh, made of, of, of Tomb Raider. Uh, I wouldn't go on that personally, but some people do. There's even the Lara Croft Way in, in England, named after Lara. And, um, of course, people wanted merchandise, but again, we didn't want to in any way saturate the market, so we just allowed one or two very, very... A uh, small number of items, so uh, we didn't want to be seen as over exploiting <laughs> the market, so we made just one or two select items. So um, we get to the point where you create some intellectual property, it becomes a brand, it becomes a, you extend that brand to become a franchise, you get incremental me revenues from licensing. I cannot say again that you want to determine your own destiny, the best way to do it is to create your own IP. Uh, so what's Lara up to at the moment? Well, recently we had Lara Croft in the Garden of Light. 
Um, I think I've probably overrun my time, so I won't share that. But just to tell you that there's a new Tomb Raider in development. Um, I'm very, very excited about this. Being done by Crystal Dynamics in, uh, in California. Um, there's a new way of looking at Lara. This is going to be a prequel rather than a sequel. It's how she became a, a Tomb Raider. And not only that, she's going to be not, she's not going to be Teflon coated anymore. She's going to be able to take injuries and you're going to feel a lot more of an emotional tied to her, why is my computer died? I have no idea. It's a power thing again. I need to kick start this thing. It's alright, the green lights come back on. It keeps losing power, the green light keeps going off, and there's power. We're nearly, nearly finished now. Let's just come into the... Okay, we have power again. Have we lost everything? This could take some time. Let's pray for the best. Anyway, I'll just keep everyone talking while this happens. Um, hopefully it happens. Is this go, it's going to be a prequel rather than a sequel. Um, it's kind of how Lara became a, a Tomb Raider. It's how she went to, how, on this journey, uh, traveling. Ah. Sign in. I'll get, my, I'll get my email address now. Um, so... Um, this is the, a young Lara, and she, be, has, she becomes a survivor on an island. She, there's, a, there's a plane crash. Uh, she uh, lands on this island, and she has to survive. And it's all about her dealing with that severe circumstance in which she finds herself, and she becomes a born survivor, and she has to survive some pretty terrible things on this happens on this island. So this is going to come out next, next autumn. It's already been talked about with much, much excitement and anticipation in some of the leading press. And I'll show you again a trailer, again produced by our, our friends over at Square Enix in Japan, and to set the mood and tone for the game. A famous explorer once said that the extraordinary is in what we do, not who we are. I finally set out to make my mark. To find adventure. But instead, adventure found me. us going. Something that pushes us. I found a tree. 
truth. And I knew what I must become. Poor baby, I don't like her seeing get hurt like that. Um, just one little bit of uh, kind of serious stuff. Um, in, in the UK in particular, we don't have computer science on the school's national curriculum. We have ICT, which is more about secretarial skills. Um, and I'm trying, with a few colleagues, trying to get computer science on the school's national curriculum. And I, I wrote a report for the culture minister recently titled Next Gen. Um, if anyone's interested in finding out more about uh, computer science as a skill, please go to www.nesta.org.uk and you can download a, a full copy of the report. Um, it's quite an exciting read and it's even been mentioned in, in number 10 now that the, the issue we have if we want to create a, 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 a digital economy, we can't do that with an with unskilled workforce. So that's our top recommendations is for schools to get computer science into the curriculum and for universities to develop a card marking scheme to identify the best courses. But enough of that. Um, I'd just like to say, by finishing by, I think, you know, games have been a fantastic thing for me. In my life, I've been in the industry 35 years. I firmly believe in the cultural, social, and economic benefits we do to our society. They're a good thing in terms of choice and consequence, problem solving, puzzle solving, um, intuitive learning, technology, there's so many good things about computer games that go unsaid in the press and I'm very proud to have been appreciated, uh, to be associated with the industry. So that's all from me, so thank you very much indeed. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you.